We're already live. We're live? Yeah. We're live. Okay, but the way, you know, the way Facebook Live works is we got nobody watching us right now. It really doesn't matter what we say, but they can play it back later. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully we get some people who join us. I'm, I guess this is going on to my profile and whatnot. Uh, so let me introduce myself. My name is James Betzold. If you're my friend on Facebook, you've probably already seen this. You probably know who I am. Over to my right here, sorry, uh, stage right, to my left, I guess, we have Lennis Mora, who is the primary member of our customer success team. So if you are a customer Prima Fasci, or if you're looking into using Prima Fasci for your immigration forms population and case management, you will talk to her. She's the expert. Uh, she knows everything about it. She handles sales and support, and we have a couple other members of the team for that too. And, oh, we got six people watching now. That's awesome. Let me see if I can see comments. All right, no comments yet. Go ahead and post a comment if you want us to answer a question or something. Uh, so what we decided to do is we're going to do this little uh, video podcast thing and include it as a newsletter in case you don't see it here. Oh, we're up to eight people. All right, so first of all, Lennis, say hi. Say where you're from. Tell a little bit about yourself. Hello, so my name is Lenny for Prima Fachi for uh, like over two years. And the first contact to Prima Fachi, uh, I'm the, I work for them. Well, I do a, a little bit of everything. I do sales, I do support. Um, I am from Colombia. I am living in Colombia right now. And I'm very happy to help you with whatever I can. Well, I'm in Prima Fasci. So living in Colombia right now, that whole country is on lockdown, right? It is. Yeah, I live in a hometown. It's right to the south. It's about like nine hours from Bogota to the south. And yeah, we're very like right now uh, during <laughs> Saturdays and Sundays, we're not even allowed to get out of the house. So there, you cannot go to the stores or buy anything. Uh, you can get deliveries. But that's it. And during the week, we only we can go out only one day, depending on the number, the last num digit of our ID. So we can go out one day per week, and that's it. That's cool. So at least you get you know a little bit of going outside time. Here we've got people protesting about uh, about the lockdown. So they'll drive to the capital of the state with a group of other people and protest. So. Still supposed to stay at home though. Anyways, uh, let's go forward with what we were talking about today. So let's do a little bit of an immigration update. So what is our first topic for today, Lennis? So uh, we're going to talk about the the latest news that we have on the Department of Justice, the EOIR, Executive Officer for Immigration Review. Uh, we're going to talk about the latest news that we have there. So the latest news, of course, is if you have a non-detained case, if you're not in immigration jail, uh, then your case is delayed until, like if you have it between now and it said all, all non-detained hearings are canceled on through, what, May, is it May 20, 29th? 29th. So if you had a hearing scheduled between now and May 29th, you don't go. They're going to send you another notice in the mail, rescheduling it for some point in the future. And probably it's not going to be until 2023. That's sort of the news that we're hearing from uh, some of our friends in the immigration lawyer community. Uh, in our in our case, we actually had a case that is pushed out, it's going to get pushed out further uh, again as well. So if it's a non-detained case, if you're not in jail, you don't have to go to the immigration court for that. You're going to go another time. They'll reschedule it. If you're detained, you still have your hearing, unfortunately. And of course, that depends on, you know, the different specific court you're dealing with. They all have their own updates for how they're making adjustments because of COVID-19. All right. So that's number one. Uh, Non-detained cases canceled through May 29th. What's next? What's what's topic number two? Uh, topic number two is the visa bulletin. We already update the uh, per priority days on Prima Fasci because the the new the May 2020 
Visa Bulletin is already out. Yeah, and I mean, it's been out for a little while, so that's all updated. So if you have a petition pending with immigration and you're in a preference category for work or for family, uh, good thing to keep your eye on that because even though embassies are closed and the consulates are closed and they're not taking appointments and we're hearing all sorts of weird stuff from the president again, um, you can still move the paperwork forward so that when they reopen, you're ready to go. So keep an eye on the visa bulletin like you always do. You can find that at travel.state.gov. And it's usually around the middle of the month that that changes. So we're probably not far away now from getting the June numbers, uh, probably in another week. All right. And now the last topic and probably the biggest one and the most fun to talk about is what is behind my head? So over here, I'm in, I'm located in Holland, Michigan. And May 5th is begins tulip time. Except for during World War II and except for now. Uh, tulip time was officially canceled for this year, although the tulips didn't know, and so they grew out of the ground anyway. Uh, and so they're in some of our parks here. And people are trying to do their social distancing measures, and it's not always working. Lennis, I do have to tell you, though, it's pretty funny. So I go to the park, and I got my mask on, and I got my gloves on, and I, I pulled out my drone because I've got a DJI Mavic Pro 2 or Mavic 2 Pro. Um, so I can fly over the tulips and get some really cool video footage of that. And I figured, you know, I'd share that on YouTube so people who can't really go outside, they can still enjoy it. Well, as soon as I pull my drone out, you know, it's like five-year-old kids comes running over. Oh, man, cool. A drone. Is that a drone? Can you see it on your remote there? Is it asking me, you know, a hundred questions? And I'm just like, in any normal time, I'd be like, yeah, buddy, you want to fly it? But now I got to be like, oh, you know, I think your parents probably don't want you within six feet of me right now. Not because I'm a child molester. I'm not. But because of social distancing requirements. So... Anyways, had to put the drone away. It was making a little noise. But I pulled out the camera and I was taking some video footage and, and photos. So what you see behind me is photos of tulips from Tulip Time 2020 canceled in Holland, Michigan. So that's fun. But that's yeah, not really the third topic. What's our third topic, Lennis? Uh, well, we're going to talk about um, different ways to stop feeling overwhelmed while working at home. Right. Because I think a lot of us are experiencing these kind of feelings. So we're gonna kind of discuss a little bit about uh, like, you know, some ways that we can stop feeling like that, which is normal. I mean, there is nothing uh, bad about that, but yeah, we're gonna talk to about like different ways to stop feeling like that. Okay, so tell us, Lennis. What's it like working from home? Are you overwhelmed working at home? Well, I think I'm your I boss, have, so be careful what you say. I think I have I have um, some days. There, you know, is I mean, I've been in working from my apartment for about like two months already. So, I mean, there are some days that I, I it's not that I feel overwhelmed. I think that I am anxious that. Like I'm not able to go outside or I'm not able to, to do the things that I used to do before. So that's that's why like make me feel a little, you know, anxious. But besides that, I'm happy working from home because, well, I don't have kids. I don't have pets. I don't have, like I, I live by myself. I have a roomie and that's it. So it is perfect for me. I don't have to go anywhere. So I just, you know, get ready and sit on my, in front of my computer and that's it. So I don't have to take the uh, any transportation or anything like that. But yeah, sometimes I, I cannot meet my coworkers and everything, but yeah, it's okay. I mean, I'm doing okay. You know, it sort of reminds me of when, uh, when I first opened my law firm, um, I was actually, we, we rented a place uh, that was like office in the front and sort of house in the back. So you had your front lobby area and your waiting area, the offices, and then in the back, we had sort of built it out a little bit to, to be comfortable for us to live there as well. Uh, you know, right out of law school, didn't have a lot of money, but uh, we had found that awesome space to open our firm. And yeah, wake up in the morning, shower, put some clothes on, maybe not shoes, walk up to the front and there, that was the, that was the morning commute. 
So it sort of brings me back a little bit. But let me tell you, when you throw kids into the mix and they're under anywhere under 10 years old, mm -hmm. man, <laughs> it changes the that's probably for an a scenario. Changes the scenario. So okay. So I don't know. For me, sometimes it gets overwhelming working at home, but honestly. I'm a little bit of an introvert, so when we hear about this, like, oh, everyone's got to work from home now, I'm like, great! I can finally get some stuff done! <laughs> yeah, not... especially, like, things around the house. But, um, yeah. yeah, that's the thing with that. And also, you get to, to share more time with your family, of course. Like... Whether you like it or not. <laughs> I... I yeah, exactly. Whether you like it or not. Well, I don't. I don't live with my family, but I mean, I take some time to go to see my dad because he lives very close. Yeah. So yeah, I, I kind of found out that during this time, I've been more like I, I've been sharing more time with my my siblings and my dad than I used to do before. Yeah, well, there's, so, a, there's yeah. a silver lining. All right. So the article we're looking at is actually from entrepreneur.com. 16 ways to stop feeling overwhelmed at work. Let me see if I'll if it's going to let me share the screen here. Yeah, here we go. All right, so this is the article we're looking at for anybody who's interested. A lot of great infographics in here. Um, let's let's sort of start at the top. What's number one way to stop feeling overwhelmed at work? First of all, uh, da -da -da -da. Here we go. Okay, let's close that. All right. Think a positive thought. How does that help, Lennis? How does the power of positive thinking help you and not getting well, okay work? Because if you start start <laughs> thinking about like, oh, I'm not gonna get this done, or oh, this is too much, or I have too much stuff right now, and so you just get like really overwhelmed that you don't even know how to like how to do it or where to start to do, to do, to work on that, on that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I, there's some days that, for example, I have a lot of people that I have demos or I have like support calls. Uh, and then I, I, we, we have a lot of things that we're working right now. So sometimes I, I get like really busy during the day, but there is like, okay, so right now for me, the most important are the clients. So that's my priority. Then if I get enough time, I will work on the other projects that we have. So that way I put, you know, my priorities first and then uh, I'll do the rest of the, the rest of the day that I have time, I will work on the other projects. So I don't get overwhelmed and I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah. I just can do yeah. one thing at a time. Yeah, that's real. And I think, even like thinking a positive thought can go a long way. I think when you actually verbalize it, that helps a lot too. Like if you can physically say out loud, all right, I can do this, you know, or, uh, or like they show in the example here, uh, I'll get this done. I'm going to do it. I'm going to power through it. It's going to be okay. Like just being able to physically say it kind of tricks you and tricks your brain into thinking, oh, they said it's okay. It's going to be okay. And sort of lets you refocus and and get to what you need to do because it can be overwhelming. Like, oh man, I, you know, I've got to make sure I got food in the house. I got to make sure my kids are okay. I got to make sure that work goes forward. I got to take care of, you know, in your case, got to take care of all these customers who have these, you know, uh, sales needs or if there's a support ticket coming through, something like that. You know, we want to be super responsive to that. So I think, yeah, think a positive thought is a good number one. Definitely helpful. Uh, when you start to get a little bit overwhelmed at work. Uh, let's go on to number two. You wanna read number two for us? Sure. Uh, number two is uh, take a moment to be aware of your surroundings. Okay. So in, it, can, uh, it can talk about like, you know, sometimes, so when you, we just focus like, you know, uh, like what you're doing in your computer. So you're not aware of what's going on around you. So even though that we're in a close space, so there are some things that are going on around us. So if you had kids, I mean, you know, you, you have your kids there or if there's some things that you can, there, there is like uh, the, the article talks about a, a tip, it's called the five, four, three, two, one <laughs> metal. 
basically is like five fine things that you can see around you, five four things that you can touch, five three things that you can hear, five two things that you can smell, and find one thing that you can taste. It kind of help you to to get a little bit less overwhelmed when you when you try to do things like that. Yeah, again, giving yourself just a minute to refocus and reprioritize. I, I think for parents, the five, four, three, two, one method is like, be quiet. You have five seconds to do this. Or three, five, four, three. <laughs> That's how we've been using it at my house. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't have kids, but I work for, with kids for a long time, so I don't know. I know how that works. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your background because you've like worked in depth with kids for a while. Yeah, yeah, I was an au pair for two years, and then I went to school uh, on uh, the Metropolitan State University in Minnesota. I, actually, I just got my my degree for my um bachelor's so oh. but uh, yeah i work with kids for a long long time i mean i love them but it it, it was it was pre i think that that's one of the reasons that i decide that i, I don't want to have my own kids because you know i already have the experience of <laughs> having kids that were not mine but yeah were with me 24 hours seven days per week, 365 days per year. <laughs> so it was a good experience. I mean, I love kids. I love them. And I, you know, I discovered a, a lot of things that I didn't know about me because of kids. Like, I didn't know that I was very patient, that I could love a person the way that I love these kids. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't, I, actually yesterday I was talking to, to Angela who is uh, Mr. Bexel's wife. And I was telling her, I don't even know how you guys do it because you have so much work. And then, you know, with the kids and all of that, it is it is hard. But kids are the best things ever. They're so cute. <laughs> Easy for you. No, we love our kids, of course. <laughs> all right, yeah. let's go to number three here. What's number three, Lennis? So number three is uh, tied up your work area and i think you know like in my personal opinion this is very very important not even your like not only your work area so i'm kind of a cleaning freak kind of like i i cannot handle mess so uh, this is something like very very important for me like i keep everything in my apartment clean all the time like i can i cannot work in a messy in a messy space and it's it is hard, like, I mean, just to, to focus on, on doing your work while you're looking at the mess around you, I don't know. I don't think, I mean, for me, it doesn't really work like that. So I have to be in a clean space. So I have to have everything organized and I have to see like that. Everything around me is organized and clean too. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, for me too, when I come into work, um whether I'm working at home in my office there or at the office here uh, because I'm able to escape once in a while. Uh, it's all about clearing off the desk, putting everything in order. If I got to put stuff in piles or put stuff in boxes and hide it, I just need that clean space. Um, I need my whiteboard clear so I can go up whenever I have an idea, I can go right on it. But just, to, it's so important to have that clean space. Um, whoops, there we go. So let's see here again. Uh, yeah, what started in the Harvard Business Review found that working in a cluttered or messy work environment can increase stress, anxiety, and lead to emotional exhaustion. So clean up, have a clean space. All right, let's move on. What's our next item here? Ignore your notifications for a while. Yeah. Yeah, anyone who has Facebook knows how this works. Anytime you comment on something and somebody else comments on it, Facebook tells you. It's like Facebook is encouraging you to snipe back. Go see what they said about you. And then you're going to be, oh, well, no, I'm going to say this now. And that can be really distracting. And not just Facebook, right? You get these notifications and emails and little things are going on and on and on and on and on. And sometimes it's better to just, at least for a man with a man brain like me, I have to put that aside 
and I have to get my work done. I like to focus on one thing at a time so I can actually get get work done and not have to worry about it. Um, so yeah, turn off the notifications for a while. Take a break. In fact, uh, I don't know if I have mine. I don't see them here now. They're on the counter or something. Noise canceling headphones. If you have noise canceling headphones, Bose makes a great one, the Quiet Comfort 2, or they probably have the three now, but the ones that actually cover your ears, there's something about not just having a quiet time, but have that active noise cancellation happening in your ears, where I noticed for me, it provides like just the next level of tranquility, where I not just hearing nothing, I'm hearing something with it, which is nothing, which helps me focus and just sort of block out all the other, literally the other noise, even if it's just the air or the HVAC or something. Um, so that might be something uh, that could be helpful for people. I know for me, it's super helpful. Like even if I'm doing a project or working on casework, I've got my Bose headphones on the, with the noise canceling enabled and either I'm listening to nothing or music or something, but it just seems to block out everything else, which is really nice. All yeah. right. Ooh, here's one that you may or may not be able to do. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Take lunch with a coworker. Those people are not six feet apart, so they are in active violation of the CDC social distancing guidelines, right? Um, but in the meantime, are there any substitutes we could do? I mean. You could video conference a lunch with someone. I know that um, my wife has gone with a friend or, where they go pick up food and then they meet in a parking lot. And so they just stay in their own cars and they got like the window down a little bit just so that they can get some sort of social interaction uh, while eating and sort of taking a break. So, yeah, there's that. Oh, yeah. And look, it was a study by my alma mater, the University of Michigan. Small talk with colleagues can reduce stress by improving efficiency, planning, prioritization, and organization. University of Michigan. Go blue. All right. What's next on our list? Uh, next is listen to some music while working. That's good, too. And it helps a lot. I do that all the time. So I have my music on and when I, especially when I'm working on uh, the projects that we have going on. So I just turn on the music and I'll, it can help me to focus and to, I don't know. I just get so involved in, in the, in the, what I'm doing and the music that I, I feel that I'm very productive when I'm listening to some music. Yeah, I think that can help. It looks like specifically they said here, Stanford University found listening to music from the Baroque era can reduce stress by improving the brain's ability to organize new information. Baroque music is classical music for those who, who don't know. Um, so look, they give you a playlist here you can go and listen to. Yeah, it could be, you know, there's, there's all sorts of them. In fact, if you've got an Alexa, Alexa will... Alexa, can you play a relaxing playlist, please? Here's a playlist you might. Oh, I stopped it. All right, let's try it again. Alexa, play relaxing classical music to work with. I don't see the playlist relaxing classical music to work with. Alexa, play work music. The playlist, relaxing orchestral music on Amazon Music. Relaxing orchestral music. There you go. There you go. You turn that on. Oops. Pump the volume up. There you go. Right? Alexa, stop. But you can't listen to it while you're streaming because it just causes problems. All right. So, yeah, listen to some music. Put some music on. You know what else is good? Audiobook. If you don't have, like, depending on what you have to do for your job, you got to really focus. That's one thing. But if you can hammer some stuff out while you're listening to an audiobook, a lot of good ones out there on Audible. All right. Uh, what's our next item, Lennis? Next item is get some exercise. Ugh. Yeah. A little stretching routine. 
Let's say that uh, try performing this stretching routine five times. It can be done either sitting at your desk, the chair, or standing up. Mm, sit to get fit. <laughs> Google that. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get a kick out of that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what else can you do? Do a little bit of yoga, even if it's not like for 30 minutes. You could at least go into a position, stretch out a little bit, keep things moving. Because when you sit for a long time like this, um, I mean, people sit at work, they sit at the office, they sit at home even more. I think it's important to pay attention to where you're sitting. Like if you're sitting on the couch or a recliner, that may not have the best posture for you. You may find that you end up getting more muscle spasms or discomfort at the end of the day than if you just sat in like a regular chair. Um, but yeah, get some exercise. We're actually allowed to go out here. Um, the governor said specifically we can go out and do exercise. You can go for a walk. You can go for a bike ride. Stay, stay far apart from other people, but not far from the house here. We've got some really cool bike trails. Um, so I you know, taking my bike there and go through those trails up, down, round through the trees, whatnot. It's actually pretty fun, but some sort of exercise you need. You can't just stay at home and watch Netflix. That does not count as exercise. <laughs> All right. What do we got for number eight here? So this one is the last one and is us for help. Taking on too much can lead to burnout. And a study from by Gallo found that 44% of full-time employees reported feeling burned by their jobs sometimes. Huh. All right. Ask for help. I mean, what else do you say about yeah, that? There's, there's not, yeah, there is nothing bad about that. Because sometimes, you know, you feel that if you ask, I don't know, but no, yeah, we, we should ask for help. If, we'll, that if we feel that it's too much, we, we should always ask for help. Yeah, and, and here's something I noticed. Like even, you know, with me just getting some casework done, if I run into something, you know, depending on sort of how the day is going, how I slept last night, I might find that I hit one of those mental roadblocks where the only thing I can do really is say, hey, Angelita, what's uh, on this case, this thing's going on, what's going on here with this? And that gets the wheels turning again. Uh, so that can be helpful. Uh, in fact, in a lot of our meetings, I've really had to take on, uh, we, we're using this tool, Infinity, for, uh, for managing our tasks and productivity and uh, product roadmap at Prima and with the forms team, because we're getting ready to release a bunch of new forms. So just realizing that not everything I'm going to be able to commit to memory right now. So have a way of being able to refer to stuff that teach it, or that can show you where you left off last time. So yeah. All right. Ask for help. Wasn't this like, wasn't this list supposed to be 16 things? Yeah. 16 well, the other, yeah. But no. the other, the other 18 is what to do to stop getting overwhelmed at work in the future. No. Well now like you're, uh, working from home, the other eight ones are to prevent it getting overwhelmed after you start working at the office again. Oh, cycle or walk to work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the first one. <laughs> that depends how far you got to go. Yeah, and if it's course. snowing outside or if it's cold. Um, yeah. But yeah, the sentiment is sweet for sure. Let's go fast through these other ones. Identify tasks that can be delegated. Yeah, I mean, if it's something you don't have to do yourself and you can have uh, somebody else on your team do and you can train them to do it right, that's important. I've had to learn that a lot recently, um, just being able to delegate things and make sure people are trained to be able to handle it. Three, ooh, this is, we can take some time on this. Find a new hobby. Let's hear it, Lennis. What are your new hobbies going to be? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I've been trying to figure that out, but... Um, right now, I kind of wanted to learn trading. Learn trading? Yeah. Like stocks? Yeah. Fun? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Miss Moneybags. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I've been reading about it, so I kind of wanted to, to do that. 
You know, I was actually uh, listening to, was it on the radio or read an article or something? I saw a headline talking about how right now uh, online trading platforms like E-Trade, Scott Trade, Ameritrade, those things, uh, Vanguard, they're having like a record number of people who are going and accessing their learning resources. So you're not the only one who thought that this might be a good time for that. And let's not forget the fact that there's a lot of stocks going through the friggin' floor right now. And what's the one rule of successful investing? Do you know what that is? I know it. In fact, did you know that when I went to my undergrad, I did my undergrad in business administration with a focus in finance? No, I didn't know that. Yeah. When I graduated, I was con I had considered uh, going and working for like an Ameritrade, doing, you know, securities exchange stuff. Um, but instead, I went to law school. But yeah, no, so I'm, I'm educated in that. The one successful rule to investing is you buy low and you sell high. So you turn a profit. That's it. So yeah, there's all the other technicalities of how to find things and do research and read charts and whatnot. But uh, stocks are crashing through the floor right now, which means not that their company is going out of business, but it does mean that what people believe their future or near or long-term income is going to be is going to be lower because of the current market conditions. However, this can't happen forever. So at some point, those stocks are going to go back up. So you sort of look for them to crater out at the bottom without having the company go under completely, right? But their stock price maybe goes down a bit. You buy it, you hold it. And then when it goes up, hopefully it goes up and not down further. But when it goes up, you sell it, you make money. That's how stocks work, right? Um, mutual funds are just funds of different stocks. And you hope that over time, that group of stocks as a whole will go up. So you sort of minimize some risk. So yeah, that's one good hobby, financial trading, right? Why not uh, You know, grow that nest egg for retirement? Uh, anything else? We had some friends who moved... Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. We had some friends who moved a couple states, a few states away, more than a few states away, and uh, left a bunch of stuff in their garage. They're like, you know what? Go grab whatever you want. And they had some bikes there, like some bicycles. So grab some bicycles, road bike. The other day, I, I took my first road bike trip. It was like, I think I went probably five miles. Uh, but I drove down to the state park, went down to the beach, sat on a bench. It was cold and windy. Uh, but you know, so considering that as a hobby, using the bicycle a little more often, get it some exercise. Uh, and there's unlimited fun available with technology and the internet. So doing things like this. So find a hobby. And that's the thanks to our friends at Kansas State University. Uh, let's see here. Oh, it's yeah. a new list. To-do list. Tell us about the to-do yeah. list. Yeah, write your tour best. I don't do it before bed, but I always do it in the morning. Well, actually, you know what? Um, I, I remember that Mr. Bexel used to ask me to do like, a, write my calendar for the day, the goals. And I, I don't know, I just got, you know, doing some other stuff and I couldn't have forgot about that. But then like later we've been doing that. So I can, uh, I feel that it helps a lot because it kind of helped me to, to focus on what I have to do. Like, you know, I have, Everything listed in there. Of course, there's some things that came out during the day, like, you know, uh, like a phone call or maybe I uh, get an email from a client that he wants to meet with me or they need help with something. But, uh, yeah, being able to to write these goals the first thing in the morning help me to kind of be on track during the day. Yeah. So, and I think that that's, that kind of relates to the to-do the, to the, to the, to list. I don't do it at, at night, but I'll do it first thing in the morning. And I always like, if I don't get things done during the day, I always write down everything so I don't forget uh, about like, you know, any detail or, because sometimes there's some small things that we don't think that they're important, but they are. So that's why I use a lot my notebook and I take a lot of notes all the time. Yeah, I think it's inevitable that throughout the day we're gonna be interrupted with little things, even if it's like just, colleague has a question or con customer has a question or something like that sort of pulls us off that having that list to just go back and look at 
first, remember what it was you were doing. Second, sort of get you into that mode again of checking things off of that list really does help. And then at the end of the day, you can see all the things that you got done, which is motivating and rewarding and helps to remain, not be so overwhelmed. All right, that's a good one. Uh, ah, ha, 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 ha. Oh, we're going to plug some of our friends on this one. Okay. Get a good night's sleep. Before we go on to this one, I know we're sort of probably most of the way through this already, but let me just remind you. I'm attorney James Betzold. I'm here with Lennis Mora. We are both uh, with Prima Fasci, which is immigration case management software for attorneys uh, to help you auto-populate your forms and manage your caseload. Find more information at primafascinow.com. Okay. And what we're talking about is we're talking about the 16 things you can do to avoid being overwhelmed at work. And so we've gone through the first eight, and now we're going through the second eight, and we're on number five of that. And this is get a good night's sleep. And I can't stress the importance of that. I think when I was younger, I was probably more impervious or agnostic to getting a good night's sleep. But I think once I hit my 30s, it's like, if I don't get a good night's sleep, I just can't function the same anymore. So what are some things that you do to get a good night's sleep? Let me share some of the things I do to give a good night's sleep, all right? I make sure my room is dark. I got me some blackout curtains to block out all the light from the street, from outside. I don't have any lights on. I don't have a night light. I think that's probably a huge thing I've done to get a good night's sleep. The other major thing is sort of making sure the temperature is right. Now, some people like it really cool. Some people like it really warm. The important thing is you figure out how you respond best to. They say here between 59 to 66 degrees Fahrenheit. And, you know, that's ideal, I guess. Well, I'm, yeah, probably the higher end of the 60s for me or 70s. Right at 70 degrees, I'm pretty comfortable. But a bed. You need a good bed. You need a good mattress with the right amount of support. Not too hard, not too soft. Pillow. Make sure you have a good pillow. Now, look, I got a friend who works over at uh, purple.com. And we are not endorsed. In fact, this is our first little episode here. But let me just tell you that I bought this pillow from Purple. And I bought these uh, seat cushions from Purple. In fact, I don't know if I can, let me see if I can show it to you here. You can't really tell from there. Let me open this thing up. So these purple pillows, the Harmony pillow this is the newest one that they have. And it is divine. It doesn't, it doesn't stay collapsed in. So you put your head on it. It's perfect. Has the right resistance. It's a cool surface. It's got like this, like under the cloth, there's this like gel grid material, which is perfect for that. And it's fantastic. And I just ordered another one because I love them so much. All right. Now, the Purple Mattress Company, right? They make these seat cushions as well. Now, this one's actually blue, but it's got this grid and it's jellyish. And this one is identical to the purple one. It's actually by the same company. They license it out to another company called Wonder Gel. So you're getting the same product that's just a little bluer instead of purple. But these are fantastic for sitting on. If you sit in an office chair for any amount of time during the day, especially like in a row, you need to have something comfortable. Otherwise, you start pinching nerves, muscles start tightening up, you get all sorts of issues. You want a good, comfortable cushion to sit on, and that's the one you want. You can get these things on Amazon. They're like 40 bucks. You can buy the purple branded one from purple.com. So I think that one's like 60 bucks, but it's, you know, same deal. It's got this like, it gives you the perfect resistance, and there's enough of it there that you never bottom it out. And they have a couple different models of this thing too, but I highly recommend it if you're working from home and sitting a lot. The reason I'm talking about this is because they have another version. They have this other pillow uh, by purple.com. So not the Harmony, but the other one is like a little flatter and it's made of out of that same grid material. And that's also an excellent pillow. So go ahead and invest the money in a fancy pillow and in a fancy mattress if you need it so that you get a good night's sleep. Otherwise, you're not going to be productive. You're going to be miserable, and nobody wants to live that way. All right, I've gone on and on about mattresses and pillows and cushions. I feel like that's disproportionate to the topic at hand here. 
What do you have to tell us about getting a good night's sleep, Lennis? I think you're on mute because I can see you and I can see your microphone here. But Oh, I would say that go. I don't know. It's kind of hard for me because um, I feel that I don't really sleep that much because I, I go to bed early, but there's sometimes, you know, that it's like midnight and I'm still awake. But what I do is, yeah, my room is very dark and I like to be in like a cold space. So it's, it's really cold and I love it like that. Um, and I turn off my, like, you know, my phone and stuff, mm -hmm. like at least an hour before I fall asleep. So I don't get distracted with that, uh, even my TV and stuff like that. All right, let's go to the next item that is going to help us from getting overwhelmed at work when you're working from home. Reduce the time you estimate your tasks will take. What is that? According to Parkinson's law, I'm not familiar with this law and I'm a lawyer, uh, a task expands to fill the time you have assigned to it. Shortening deadlines will help you get through more tasks and reduce stress. I'm going to say it. I think this is BS. I don't agree with this one. What do you think, Linus? You're muted again. Yeah, I agree with you. So I don't know. I mean, no, I'm not. I mean, if you're chronically oh, saying, yeah, hello? everything's going to take an hour and it doesn't, okay. I think if you're reasonable with your time estimate, that's just what you got to do. And then whatever happens, happens because they're all estimates anyway. Yeah. Parkinson's that's true. law. Well, I don't know who Parkinson is, but I don't believe in this law that he wrote. And it's unconstitutional. Next. All right. The next item to avoid being overwhelmed at work is... Track your time. Track your time. I don't know. Research from Monthly Labor Review suggests that people who say they work very long hours are overestimating. If you say to yourself, I work 70 hours a week, your brain reacts as if it were true. You got a brain that's very gullible, maybe. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. Do we agree with this one, Linus? We've only disagreed with one so far. This may be number two. I don't know. I mean, I haven't really practiced to track my time. Let's run a scenario. If, if I said today, uh, Lannis, I need you to track your time for every little thing you do. That's not that gonna Is that going to overwhelm you or are you going to be like, yeah, no problem? No, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, Especially, I mean, like, I mean, it is probably like if you're like during the, you know, weekdays while you're doing stuff at the office, it can be, you know, not overwhelming. It can get a little bit annoying because there's sometimes that, you know, like I'm doing right now, like I'm working on, on this project. And then all of a sudden I receive a phone call from a client. So then I'll move from the from my work to the phone call. And then I will move to help the client. So so kind of like there are three different things that I will have to track. So I don't know. I mean, <laughs> that can be a little overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And this is, this is probably like a uh, heresy for an attorney to say, but that's what happens. I mean, if you're in a situation where you're multitasking and all this stuff, I get it. it, it tracking your time on top of those, that's just one more thing. No. And it's not just one more thing. It's if you're doing three things, then it's three more things you got to do. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, no. if, you're, if you're in a type of work think... where you work linearly, like where all you have to do is work on this mm -hmm. and then go to the next and then go to the next and no one's interrupting you. Okay. Maybe that's helpful. Maybe. Mm -hmm. But if you've got a to-do list, yeah, that's cool. you can just check that stuff off. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the last thing on our list here. The last, last one is to avoid being overwhelmed when working remotely or working at your office. Break tasks down into smaller parts. Hmm. All right. Vote. Helpful or help or unhelpful? What do you think, Lennis? Um, yeah, I think it, that, that that can help. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, if you over like you you were seeing things like in a big picture. So when you 
like break them down into small pieces, it is probably easier and more effective to get things done. Agreed. I, I, I had I gotta tell you something, Mr. Bexo, that I was thinking yesterday about Remember, we're live. that we're, we're live right now. Yeah, I know. Okay. But we I was yeah, about the the, the project that we have going on in Prima Fashion now. Uh -huh. Because, you know, we used to have another person that uh, he was the one who was giving us instructions about this work. But I feel that now that you're in charge of this project, we're doing so much progress because we're like, you know, going from step one to step five, six steps, but it's one thing at a time. It's not the whole entire thing. It's just one thing at a time. And uh, we're, we're doing a lot of progress. Like I feel that, yeah. It's going pretty fast now. And I think... Yes. I mean, that's one of the techniques I use. I said, all right, let's just map out everything that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do this first. And don't worry about the other parts. Just do this. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow we're going to do that. And tomorrow we're going to, you know, we'll do whatever we have to do then. Because, you know, sometimes we've got to make adjustments and whatnot. But even in our task management tool that we're using, those infinity boards, uh, startinfinity.com, if anyone's interested. Super helpful. And they have a lifetime deal now. You pay like... 90 bucks and you get three work spaces. We got to talk about this. This is, I mean, this is technology. This is us. And it has to do with breaking tasks into smaller things. Um, so for example, you, you've heard of Trello. You've heard of Asana. You've you heard of, uh, ah, shoot, what are the other ones out there? Monday.com. They do relentless advertising on YouTube, Monday.com. Um, you've heard of all these different task management boards. Well, when you look at it from a structural standpoint, I wish that we had just built a task management board and marketed it toward attorneys because it's way simpler than some of the other stuff we're doing. And that's one of the, we are definitely adding that to Prima as well. So anyways, with infinity, um, I looked and I looked and I looked at all the other tools out there. And this one popped up one day on my Facebook feed with the super deal. And in my opinion, it is the best one out there so far. Uh, especially if you're a cost conscious attorney or immigration attorney or person, professional, whatever, any part, anyone who has a life can benefit from this deal. Uh, and it's at startinfinity.com. They have special pricing these days. In fact, let me see. Uh, I'm going to switch views here so I can safely go to this window, minimize it. Let me see what their pricing is today. Da, 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 startinfinity.com and here we go oh 22 days the lifetime deal goes away or goes pricing increases so right now sign up apparently within the next 22 days it is instead of nine dollars per user per month you pay a once lifetime deal so for what, what they call it, they have workspaces, right? And I'll tell you what that is in a minute. But for three workspaces, you can have 25 team members on it, collaborators. They give you 150 gigabytes of storage and all the features of Infinity for $149. Flat fee, you're a member forever. 149 bucks. Compared to $2,700 per year if you have 25 users. And they even have this nice little chart here that shows you how much money you save for 10 people. So assume you've got 10 people who are collaborating and have access to these boards. Compared to Trello, you're saving 1,200 bucks a year. Compared to Asana, you're saving 3,000 a year. Compared to Monday, I don't believe this is even accurate. They say it only saves you 1,900 per year, but Monday.com is like $40 per user per month. So I think it's way north of there. ClickUp, Airtable, 2,400 per year. And you got all of, you've got the same features. So what does it let you do? It's your own like data friendly database interface for managing tasks. You can have your own CRM with it. You can manage orders, inventory, uh, team members, HR stuff, any list you have to make. Um, it's really great for for managing that. <coughs> Inside of that's just a cough. I don't have the coronavirus. Um, it's proven. Uh, if you, like I said, anything with a database, like you make your own friendly user one here and it's got a mobile app, it has a Zapier integration. So every case I create in Prima, every task I create in Prima, I have it shipped into here because from here 
it's not just looking at it in a table. You can look at it in a, and let me see, uh, let me see a safe one here I can open without giving away any client secrets or, uh, let's see, that's a lot of projects, responsibilities, yeah, practitioner list, forms, team, marketing goals. I don't really want to share any of these. It's kind of sensitive information. Let me see if I can open this one. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit here just to give an idea of, of how it can be done. I'll share this. This one's okay. So many people uh, are familiar with Prima Fasci. We do immigration forms. We are going to be releasing California forms, including county forms. Okay? Secrets out. If you're watching, you'll know that now. Um, but let me share my screen here now. This is essentially what infinity looks like, right? You've got uh, you've got different boards. This board is for pro uh, tracking our progress on the different California county forms. So for Los Angeles, the status is converted. You can change, add other ones. You can customize all the different top topics here or all the different uh, headers or columns that you add to your database. One of them is attachments, so you can upload documents to it. You can do little checklists in there as well. So like on this item, Let's go ahead and just click on this item. If I open it here, there we go. So I can see that I've got these things that need to be done, team members who it's assigned to, due dates, and then here, steps that need to happen on each of these items. So I can go in and I can check these things off once they're done. Uh, it's just a good way of being able to stay on top of tasks. You can also view, like in this table, if I, if I say, you know what, I want to filter them, not filter, you can filter, but I want to group it by status. So I can see everything that's in a particular status. So everything that we're analyzing, Riverside County, is here. Everything that's on hold is here. Everything that's downloaded is here. If I say, you know what, I don't want to group it by status. I want to group it by uh, the project. I have it under lead or team. The project lead. Okay. So let's go to project lead. I can see all the things I've assigned to the different people. So I see Alfonso here, and he's assigned to these counties. Roberta's assigned to these counties. Lennis is assigned to these counties, and our good friend Luis is assigned to those, and my dear sweet mother is assigned to those, and I'm assigned to this one. So there's all these different things and different ways that you can quickly view the data. So if you have a caseload that you need to stay on top of, if you have tasks that you need to stay on top of, and you've got, you're have got you working in a team, this is just a superior way of doing it. Now, let's say, uh, for example, you're working... Uh, or you volunteer at church and you've got some assignments at church that you need to get done and you want other people to be able to see where things are at and how they're going or you want to create an agenda for your meeting and get input. If you get the next pricing tier up with Infinity, uh, let's see here. You can go from 25 to 50 collaborators. If you go from that to the next pricing tier, which is 500 bucks. You know, I may as well share this. Why not? We'll give them a free commercial here. You go to the $500 one-time payment, you get 100 collab collaborators. And if you go up to the enterprise level for one time, you pay $900 one time ever. You get 30 workspaces and infinity collaborators. So however many people need to access your thing can access it. And you get 5,000 gigabytes, which is, in layman's terms, 5 terabytes uh, of storage and all features forever. So I'm at the business level right now. I'm considering just going all the way up to enterprise because um, I found it to be so useful, especially since it has a Zapier integration, especially since it's got a mobile app. Um, I could just go on and on and on about this. Uh, it's a pretty good deal. So when you're talking about breaking things down into tasks and, you know, oh, here we go. That would have been easier to do it this way. And let's see, what's the last one? Breaking things into smaller tasks in order to get them done. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely a good idea. And finding a good tool to do that with, helpful as well. All right, Lennis, anything else you wanna share with us before we wrap this up for the day? Uh, I don't think so. 
I don't think so. I think we covered the three topics that we want to talk about it today. So I just want to say that if you, like anyone that is watching this video or will watch this video later on, have questions or are interested in know and learn more about Prima Facci, please go to our website. You can get some good information there and also you can schedule a uh, demo with us so we'll be more than happy to help you how prima facie works and yes yes thank you it's all about saving time so again you can find information for prima facie at www.primafascinow.com you can go there you can sign up for a trial you get a free 15-day trial so you can actually try it out see how it works we have the most powerful form filling feature we have autofill so you fill stuff in your database, it populates the forms. We have reverse autofill. So you fill stuff in the forms and it populates your database. So wherever you put it in, you should only have to type it once. All right. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this was our first try at this. We are at exactly 55 minutes and 44 seconds. We will be signing off. We will see you next week. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.